I'm talking about acceleration in this video. And acceleration is a change in velocity during a time interval. We, we call it the rate of change. Remember, rate has to do with the time. It's the rate of change of velocity. It's how fast the velocity changes. And if we look at velocity as a vector, there are a couple things I can do to change a velocity. I could make the vector bigger, give it a bigger magnitude. I could make it smaller, give it a different magnitude. Or I could turn it. Because remember, a vector of any sort has a magnitude and a direction. I can change that vector by changing the magnitude. I'll say change in magnitude, size, or change in direction. So it's intuitive. Uh, I think everybody knows, even before they take, take physics, if you're in a car and you're going 30 miles an hour north, and then you speed up to 35 miles an hour, you've accelerated. You've changed your magnitude. If you are going 30 miles an hour and you slow down to 10 miles an hour, it's still an acceleration. And we really have to talk about positive and negative signs. It's a little non-intuitive. But any change is an acceleration. If I'm going 30 miles an hour and I turn and I stay 30 miles an hour, I've accelerated because I've changed the direction. And that's a little trickier. There's a thing called centripetal acceleration that helps you deal with that. Um, the change in the direction of the vector, we're not going to talk about a great deal in this one. So let's figure out um, what the, talk about what the basis of this is. It's a rate of change in velocity. When we talk about a rate of change, we talk about rate of change of velocity would be a change in velocity per unit time. And that's our acceleration. Delta V over T, and I'm going to say an average acceleration. For this purpose of this video, I'm going to talk about constant accelerations. That means the change in velocity is the same over any similar time interval. So if we think about what we measure velocity in, velocity is in meters per second and time is in seconds. So we could call it, I've seen it said very frequently, meters per second per second, or we could write it as meters per second squared. That just means it has the unit of meters per second squared. You may have heard of acceleration due to gravity and meters per second squared. Now, one thing, let me, let me take a look at, at the vector uh, vector uh, aspect of this. And I should, to be careful, I should be writing these sorts of things. So the acceleration vector and its average is V final minus V initial divided by the time interval. Sometimes you'll see delta T, how much time has passed going from that velocity to that velocity. In AP, you see the notation. Let me just write it without all the vector nonsense. V minus V zero over T. Where this is the velocity at the end of the problem. What you end up with. This is the velocity at the beginning of the problem. What you started with. Well, let's think of these as vectors. Okay, I'll make that a vector. This is just the notation, that little arrow just means they're vectors. Um, Let's think of what happens here. If I start with a certain velocity and I speed up, I get faster. Let's call that my initial and let's call that my final. That, so let's look at these two vectors. Here's VI and I speed up to VF. This is my initial velocity. This is my final velocity. And the difference between those, VF minus VI, is the vector difference. Well, if we have, we know how to add vectors together. We can add them tip to tail and draw the resultant. Subtracting, we can think of as this. VF minus VI is the same thing as VF plus negative VI. So really what we could do is add VF and the reverse of that, turn that 180 degrees. 
So here's what v, negative vi would be. And let's add those together. Vf, trying to keep it close to the same size. I think I'm going to make a little Vf plus negative vi, tip to tail. And then we go from the beginning to the end. And that's your delta V. That's your Vf minus Vi right there. The acceleration is going to be proportional to that. So that's your delta V. Divide by time, and you get your acceleration. If you are going to the east and you speed up, your acceleration will be in that direction. Let's consider what would happen if you had a VF that was smaller than VI. Let's do it over here. Okay, here's my VI. Here's my VF. I slowed down. So VF minus VI is going to be, here's my VF, plus negative VI ends up being in that direction. There's my delta V, and that's also going to be the direction of the acceleration. So, same direction, increasing speed, then acceleration will be in same direction. In fact, let me cross something out. Let me simply say, if you increase the speed without turning, the acceleration will be in the same direction as velocity. If, on the other hand, you slow down, decrease speed, acceleration will be opposite direction of velocity. Okay? And I should say VI because you can have two different directions for your velocities. If you have a big enough acceleration you might actually end up going in the other direction. Oh, man. And let me adjust because I've gone off the bottom of the page and let me reiterate that. Increasing speed. If you have a velocity and the acceler uh, excuse me, if you have velocity and you increase the speed, the acceleration will be in the same direction. If you have a velocity and you decrease your speed, the acceleration will be in the opposite direction of the velocity. Let me take a little more time on that. I'm going in this direction. I'm, I'm running north. If I said accelerate, speed up in same direction, speed up in the, towards the north. You'd say, oh, okay, I'll go faster. You're running north and I tell you to speed up, I tell you to accelerate in that same direction. You'd say, okay, I'll go faster. On the other hand, if I said, slow down, oh, I'm sorry, I did that wrong. If I said, accelerate in the other direction, you would have to slow down said accelerate in other direction, you would have to slow down, you decrease your speed. So accelerating the opposite direction from where you're going means you don't speed up, it means you slow down. And that's something that people have a lot of trouble with. Let's look at the graph of velocity versus time velocity versus time. We said that acceleration is change in velocity over time. And you should probably see, you remember when we did average velocity is change in position over time or displacement. Same sort of structure. So if I have, let's just have something like this. Acceleration will be the change in velocity over time. If we look at that entire length of that, graph, the change in velocity would be this distance. That's your change in velocity. The time would be 
this distance. So change in velocity over time, as you can see, is just the slope. So we really have a rule that acceleration is equal to slope of velocity versus time graph. And I want to emphasize, it's actually almost review, the overall picture of these graphs we've talked about. We've talked about position versus time, velocity versus time, and acceleration versus time. Okay, so velocity, position versus time, if I take the slope of that, I can figure out velocity information. Velocity versus time, if I take the slope of that, I can find the acceleration. Going back in the other direction, remember we talked about velocity versus time. Area under curve Have I gone off? I've gone off the bottom of the page again, sorry. Area under the curve tells you the displacement, the change in position. Similarly, the area under the acceleration versus time curve gives you the change in velocity. It doesn't tell you how fast you're going. It tells you how much the velocity changed by. There's not enough information. Let's think of this. If I had an acceleration versus time graph, okay, and let's say the acceleration is changing, and I can get a slope, that tells me how much the velocity has changed by the area under the curve. No, I'm sorry, not the slope. The area under the curve tells me how much the velocity has changed by, but there's no information here about what velocity started as. Similarly here, if I have some velocity versus time graph, the same sort of thing. I can figure out how much velocity uh, displace, uh, displacement is, sorry, how much the displacement is, but I can't, I don't have any information about where th the object started at the beginning of that velocity versus time graph. Now let's do a couple of problems. And actually, I'm going to got the problems laid out here. Okay, and Really, when we get to this point, we have to start talking about how we solve some of these motion problems, what approach we use. And really, in general, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to draw a picture, pick a frame of reference, and really I just mean pick some positive and negative directions in each, each dimension, uh, list variables, and then pick an equation and solve. And the shorthand that I have for this, that I've, I've tended to use, is solve, me solve method. Sketch, which is the drawing in the frame of ref reference. Objective, which is what you're searching for. That's among the list variables. List variables. And then pick an equation and solve it. S-O-L-V-E. And so I'm going to use that approach the solve method, which is my own little thing. Maybe I ought to copyright it, except it's really just not that impressive uh, an innovation. So let's do it with the first one. And it gets a little simple in this case. I'm just going to have a car going along. Car. And let's say it's going in that direction. I'm going to call the direction it's moving positive. That's my sketch, which is a drawing and a frame of reference. I've got a positive direction. You don't always have to have it. If everything's going in one direction, if there's no speeding up or slowing down, then it ends up the drawing can sometimes be really dull. But in this case, I think it, it works out good because we uh, end up having some sign issues. What's the objective? I asked, what is A? Always good to know what you're solving for. I've seen people solve for the wrong variable. Uh, they come up with a number and then think they're done and they're not. List the variables. When I list the variables, the initial velocity, vi, is 15 meters per second. I should have left some room. In the direction of motion, which we called positive. So the vi is 15. Then it slows down to 3. I kind of wish I'd said 3 meters per second in the same direction, which is positive. And the time 
is 4 seconds. And in these problems, I'm only going to use a situation where I know the equation already, which is A equals VF minus VI over T. Well, let's plug in. A is the unknown. I'm just going to rewrite that. I'll write it over here. A equals the un is the unknown. I'm just going to substitute in the variables. So it ends up being VF is 3, positive 3, minus VI is 15, and time is 4 seconds. I'm leaving out the units. Look, these are all in approved units in the uh, KMS system. My result's going to come out. I just don't want to uh, I just don't want to make this so busy looking, but this would be 3 meters per second minus 15 meters per second divided by 4 seconds. I'm leaving them out right now just to make it a little cleaner. A equals 3 minus 15 is negative 12 meters per second. 3 meters per second minus 15 meters per second is 12 meters per second. Here I'll write it in just because I want to see divided by 4 seconds. And this ends up being negative 3 meters per second per second which we often write as meters per second squared. I mentioned, if I said accelerate in this direction, your speed would get bigger. But we're accelerating in the opposite direction, so it got slower. So once again, if the acceleration is in the opposite direction of the initial velocity, it slows down or changes direction. Now here, in the second problem, I've got a car accelerating at 6 meters per second squared and it comes to a stop in 5 seconds. I'm going to go a little faster. I'm going to do the same drawing. Okay? And I'm going to say it's going uh, it's accelerating at 6 meters per second squared. Let's think about that. It comes to a stop if the velocity were in this direction and accelerated this direction, it would be speeding up. So I'm going to say it's moving in this direction. The acceleration must be in the opposite direction. I'll still call that positive. Uh, actually, I'm going to take that back. I'm saying it must be traveling in the negative direction. If it has a positive acceleration, let me start listing some variables. The acceleration is 6 meters per second squared. If you were moving in the, in the positive direction and accelerating in the positive direction, it would speed up. Here we can tell he's slowing down, so he must be moving in the negative direction. So my VI should come out to be some negative number. It's accelerating at 6 meters per second squared, comes to a stop in 5 seconds. There's a thing here called a phantom variable to me. Comes to a stop. We know that the end, the velocity, must be zero. This is a little tricky problem, and I'm not sure I'm exp explaining it really well. What you could do is you could say acceleration is 6, you've got the time, you've got the final velocity. The VI will come out of that automatically if we say the acceleration is the positive direction. So just from this question, you could put in those, you could list those variables, and you can write down the, uh, the entire problem. Again, we use the same equation, VF minus VI over T. How did I pick that equation? Because I only have one acceleration equation. But additionally, when you pick an equation, look and see, do you only have one unknown? I have A, I have T, I have VF. I can solve for VI. We're going to, in the next video, we're going to have a bunch of different equations to choose from. So this is one way of doing it. You always want to make sure you have one unknown to solve an equation. Let me substitute in my variables. Acceleration is 6. VF is 0, VI is unknown, so we'll just leave it as VI. Don't put X in there. X means something different. Use that same variable. That way, when you're done, you know what you solved for. Time is 5 seconds. Let's multiply both, five, both sides by 5 seconds. Again, I've left out the units, but meters per second squared, well, I better put in those units. Let me do that. Meters per second squared, just so you can see how this works out. 5 seconds. These cancel. 5 seconds times 5 meters per second squared it cancels out one of those. Think of that as seconds times seconds. One of those guys cancels out. So you end up with 30 meters per second 
equals 0 minus vi is just the same as negative vi. We can multiply both sides by negative 1 to get rid of that negative sign. And what you end up with is vi on the right side equals negative 30 meters per second. And I said that was probably going to come out to be negative. I didn't force it to. It came out automatically out of that equation. And one more problem. I throw a ball up. This should look familiar uh, in the sense that we put this basic problem in the, at the end of the last video, the uh, area under the curve, the velocity graph video. Okay, I throw a ball up, it leaves my hand moving up at 6 meters per second. I'm going to call up positive. Anything positive, uh, excuse me, anything moving up will have a positive value. Anything moving down will have a negative value. Uh, sketch, ball's going up, it's going to go up, it's come down. So, my unknown, my uh, what I'm solving for, the objective A. So, sketch, objective, and then list all the variables. Leaves my hand moving up. That means VI is 6 meters per second and positive because up it's moving up at 6 meters per second and up is positive. So VI is positive 6 meters per second. After 0.8 seconds, so the time that passes during this problem is 0.8, it's moving down. The final velocity will be 2 meters per second down. If up is positive, down is negative, negative 2 meters per second. And I'm going to go relatively quickly because I'm running out of time. A equals VF minus VI over T. Let's substitute the variables. A is the unknown. VF is negative 2. VI is 6. So it's minus positive 6 divided by 2.8. And what I end up with is A equals. These are both in meters per second. That's in seconds. So the final result is going to be in meters per second squared negative 8 divided by 0.8 meters per second divided by seconds equals negative 8 divided by 0.8 is negative 10 meters per second squared. I set up this problem carefully so I could show this. My result is negative 10 meters per second squared. That means the acceleration is down. You throw a ball in the air, it's going to accelerate in the opposite direction. If, it's, if you throw it up and accelerate it up, it would speed up. We know that doesn't happen. The acceleration must be in the negative direction. It turns out, yes, when we solve it, it comes out to be in the negative direction. That ends up being the acceleration due to gravity. So I picked those numbers very carefully when I was making that problem.